Hello. So today I want to talk about the position of our neck and our head. Um, so much of what we do for, I mean, and for, for multiple reasons, it's, it's the position of our neck in relationship to the rest of our body is affected by how we are positioning the whole body. So uh, before I may have talked about like lifting the ribs up, if I'm a rib thruster, often is going to end up, um, we might end up counterbalancing that with bringing our head forward. And so end up, you end up getting with this head that's, if I drop my ribs down, head would be way in front of the upper torso, which puts a lot of uh, weight and load on that upper spine. And um, anytime that the head ends up reaching forward, you're putting um, more, again, more load on that upper si spine, which can cause neck strain and it causes um, an exacerbation of hyperkyphosis or the rounding of your upper spine um, and a whole bunch of things. It can lead to like the headaches that we might get from tension because we end up, we're, we have this tendency to always want to look on the horizon and so when our head falls forward, we don't end up most of the time just looking straight down, but we then tilt or rotate our head back and we're really shortening the back of our neck this way. Um, lots of things you know, that cause that. So I said rib thrusting is one cause, um, but our chair sitting and our couch sitting also does it because there's something about the way a lot of us, you know, a lot of our couches and chairs are built are to tilt back and lean into the back of the chair. And where does that put our head? It's kind of reaching way forward in front of the um, torso. So if I were just to bring this torso upright, but not adjust the head, the head's way far forward. And it's just a, a function of like how much frequency and the, the volume of time that you are holding your body in a certain position is what your body starts to adapt to more or less permanently. Uh, you can offset it, but you have to, but there's a lot of the tissues may have um, actually adjusted to become shorter so that getting back to upright is uh, gonna take a lot more time. So um, other things that uh, cause that, and, and there's just a, just a general tendency because we lead with our eyes so much you know, and everything we do is in this forward-looking range where, where we're driving and looking forward, we're reading, we're um, oftentimes it's our screens, our computers, our iPhones, our books, you know, this sort of like leading forward and trying to bring our eyes towards the thing we're looking, toward, um, looking at. That can, if we're not careful, develop that habit of constantly reaching the head forward. And... You know, it's fine to look forward and reach forward if you want to see something closer. But if this is what we're just doing all day long, again, it's that frequency and volume and duration that's going to get our neck stuck. So anyway, how do we, how do we fix all that? And um, one of the best habits to start to incorporate into your daily life, and this is also going to affect a lot of our exercise itself, is uh, head ramping. So let's play with this if we will, all I just gotta do, and you can do this seated or standing, is just let your head gently fall forward, which is a nice stretch in the back of the neck anyway. So as if you're gonna take your chin to the chest. And feel free to just rock your head a little right to left. And then just go ahead and bring your head back up, however you would, and then try to show a particular way of doing it. Now, when I brought my head back up, I did a lot of, I didn't actually straighten my neck up so much, back up over the shoulders to get more vertical. What I did mostly just then is just rotated my head back, keeping the neck projecting forward in front. Can you see that? So we're gonna, Instead of just bringing your face up to look straight forward, I want to. Uh, what we do is we call it head ramping, and we call it ramping is because 
you want to think of the head and the neck as actually sliding back and up like you, it would on a ramp. So there's a backwards and an upward uh, direction. And so what it looks like, and you can play with this, is think of the um, top of the head, not the forehead, but the very top of the head, maybe even towards the back, as reaching towards the ceiling. And as you, as that reaches up, it might automatically happen, but you can also think it, that the back of the head or the back of the neck is sliding backwards. And you can see how far that goes, and then you can let the head fall forward again. And so play with that. Top of the head reaching up to the ceiling. As it does, it puts some traction on that upper spine, and it starts to pull your head back over the shoulders.